we're talking about Starship Troopers, you know, and like, you know, Matt Virgil and I did uh, a screening of Starship Troopers at uh, Lincoln Center, uh, I think, I don't know, 10,000 years ago now. But, you know, one of the things we talked about, yeah, in the before times, and one of the things that, Matt, I think you talked about in in analyzing Starship Troopers is that, like, the, the joke works because Verhoeven's giving you a version of, like, the entertainment that the society he's depicting would like display to themselves and like right. a, a movie that you would watch in Buenos Aires after your, you know, rollerball game or whatever, <laughs> you know? And like, but the joke is that what he creates is really not at that different at all from like most American movies. And like the, the, yeah. the ease with which people sort of like, uh, sort of swallowed it or didn't get the joke is just sort of testament to that uncanny Valley between, you know, the third Reich and, uh, the fourth Reich America. Yeah. Yeah, that was I read a lot of the reviews, um, like just sort of like mainstream reviews when it came out, like in the Post and Roger Ebert's and stuff like that. And the reviews were all like obviously not necessarily getting the gag of it, which I think is like the, the idea that this is basically a movie that would be made in the 23rd century of the Federation is like 100 percent. Yeah, it's like it's a movie but, that would be made if the Nazis had won the war. Basically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so over right down to the fact that like all the the sort of jokes are sadistic, and that like there's something about it that's just um that's unpleasant, and that like all the reviews noted it without noticing it somehow that they were just like like Roger Ebert, who's generally you know it's like as astute as your middle brow critics are you know ever got, was like you know it's perfectly competently done, the bugs look great, you know like whatever it's like edited well but like where's the invention where's the fun like where's the sense of, of this being <laughs> an adventure the sense of yeah, wonder and it's that. like, that's right man <laughs> like you're getting it now like it's like this is what it would look like if like you know whatever people with no sense of any of those things are making it i mean, honestly you know in a way i think about it for uh, starship troopers is actually for essentially is too talented and has too much taste to actually do it as much as because like the 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 thing that makes him and his work and the satire and his stuff specifically Starship Troopers so great is that he is fully confident in himself, which means he never feels the need to wink to the audience. Yeah, there's none of that. Let them like, know the, like that white he's in on stuff it. where it's yeah. like this is an anti hate satire. By the way, <laughs> oh, I don't know if you. I mean, the, the closest like, the closest uh, Verhoeven ever gets to winking at the audience is when Doogie Howser just strides in frame in full SS, like the full Gestapo officer's yeah. uniform. Yeah. That's as close as you get to be and like. That's at the very end. That's like the clue, punchline audience. of the movie. <laughs> yeah. And he uh, talked about that in some of the interviews that he did too, where he was like. It was important to be that people not miss the point. Yeah. And so, like, but I mean, it's like you're two hours and five minutes into the movie then before you finally put him in like the big leather fucking like <laughs> duster and send him out. Yeah, you, but, you, the yeah. Thing you, is, you is include, that, wait, so yeah, you include a, a little bit in, in your piece in The New Yorker about, um, it says uh, when, stu- when, when studio executives complained that the Federation's banner was a Nazi flag, Verhoeven reassured them, no, it's completely different colors. <laughs> 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 Even though it's this like giant eagle crest, like clutching a skull or something, it's the first thing you see. <laughs> yeah. It is the first thing to appear on screen. <laughs> but the, but like the, his his evocation of that culture, it's actually they're more tasteful than us because like look at what like Starship Troopers came out in what ninety seven, yeah. Uh, within ten years, the Transformer movies started coming out. And the Transformer movies are like our starship, like our culture's starship troopers, where it's the unironic, non uh, uh, satirical version of like what of where like our militarist consumer culture ends goes towards. And it's I just a to- it's just a fucking uh, it's a Cuisinart of just sensory overload. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and just CGI garbage. That and like weird even... upskirt photography and yeah. like John Turturro too for some reason. Yeah, like, I no, like seen the is way more respectful of women even in Starship Troopers at this these not this Nazi movie than Bay, Bay was in any yeah. of his films. Yeah, the Transformers movies are like kind of a I haven't seen them and yet like bits of information from them will periodically get kind of like stuck in my brain like as they float past. I've seen you know, every in, in one stream of them. Of garbage. So there'll be like uh, apparently like Optimus Prime. At one point, reveals that the Transformers were involved in the Underground Railroad during yes, slavery. Correct. Yeah. Oh, also, I'm so happy also to fought know that. The Nazis in World War II. Yeah. And they were classic. part of an underground society of, of like human cooperation that included people like uh, Harriet Tubman uh, and Frederick Douglass. 
So that were, but they weren't. They're not saying that Harriet Tubman was like turned into a car. No, no, no. <laughs> she was one of the, she, she she turned was one of the train, human helpers. David. She was turned into a train. <laughs> that's silly he, he was she was one of the well, helpers well what, what, the, uh, what, what, what the, i always thought it's very disturbing is that they don't talk about if the autobots were like fighting for the uh for the uh you know allies during world war ii does that mean the decepticons were like turning yeah. into trains to auschwitz this is, there's so much to explore there in the uh well, what, what, in, in the former's verse i mean well one thing to explore is certainly like a parallel that that i would draw between the the original the first transformers movie and starship troopers is that they are both in their own ways parables for the war in Iraq, but like separated by the gulf of the actual war in Iraq happening. Because yeah. like That's you know, Starship absolutely Troopers, true. Starship Troopers is like it is the best movie made about the war in Iraq before it ever happened. And it like it, it called it's an every fucking shot. Culture like, devouring, total like whatever, forever war. And yet like made at a period of like like Verhoeven talks about like he was concerned about America becoming fascist. And, you know, he's like, I see it everywhere around me. But it was like in 97, what he was talking about was like George W. Bush executing too many people in Texas. That was like the example that that he gave, which, I mean, obviously was disgusting and yet like really feels kind of quaint almost relative to like everything that's happened since then. But that's the thing is that the real a true artist is able to sense the trajectory. Yeah. And like while the rest of us are like normalizing everything as it happens and saying, no, this is normal. This is the way things are. Therefore, it's the way things should be. And it's fine. The true artist has got the antenna going and they're like, oh, I know where all this leads to. And, you know, having grown up in occupied Holland probably helped him in a way that it, it, oh, and that's why he's so good. And his, his his the fact that he is an American is why he's the best satirist of America, because he has a, he remembers something that happened uh, like more than a week before. Which, yeah. as Americans, we are trained to not to just forget everything as it happens. Essentially, to just like have a hole in the bottom of of the bucket of our like historical conception. It's a weird end note to his like American career. He made one more movie in Hollywood, and then he just went back to Europe. Yeah, uh, and I mean, some of it was that like I guess Starship Troopers didn't do well or something like that. But it yeah, did, and it's hard to look at a movie that's that like just like suffused with disgust and anxiety about like the direction of things. And then just imagine him continuing to make a studio movie every three years. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I like, mean, he made one, he made the, the hollow man, visible man. Or yeah, hollow yeah. man yeah. yeah. And he hates it and doesn't like talking about it. And then he just like went back and made, yeah. And made black book, which is like a great movie. As any movie. I think, made, yeah. I think what happened, I mean, obviously there's the compo- a commercial component because hollow man was a bomb. And that might have made it harder for him to get the movie he wanted to get made. But I mean, I, I, I I'll, and Holly Man is not great, but I think what he was trying to go for there, the idea of this person losing any sense of morality by virtue of not having any uh, any rec, uh, any consequences for his actions. That's essentially the story of America in the 90s and ever since is or, or basically since World War Two. Like we are a country who cannot suffer consequences, which means we will n- we cannot develop a morality and we cannot act morally because we will never have the the pushback of any kind of uh, of negative response to any negative thing we do. Yeah. Well, David, I want I wanted to ask you just about Starship Troopers, because like I said, like I've always viewed it as like the a perfect war in Iraq movie that like that channels uh, the Bush era and like, you know, Johnny Rico and his friends just being all like let's kill them all, you know, yeah. kill all the bugs, get them is like, you know, that, that, that real let's roll moment where like 90% of the country was just like totally on board for this fucking disaster. And then, and then we land on Clendathu and of course it turns into a fucking bloodbath and, you know, no one likes to think about that, but like, how, how does this movie speak to you about like the Trump era where there is no like big ongoing, like ground war happening, but like at the same time, I get the same Johnny Rico feeling from people showing up to Disney World, you know, like they're just yeah. ready, just ready to be thrown into the virus fucking like, you know, meat grinder. Yeah, that's the part of it that I think surprised. I hadn't, I'd gone many years without seeing it uh, before rewatching it for the story. And it was that part of it. I mean, I remembered the, the you know, action parts of it, which is basically, you know, two thirds of the movie. But the it's that feeling of of kind of everything being finished of like this period of like after conflict, after dissent, and just what you're left with is this kind of like the drumbeat of like propaganda 
war, mass death, and then like also the the inversion of everything in the society that remains on Earth to like fluffing and resupplying the war machine because and everything that, has that, been everything yeah, has yeah. been winnowed to yep. the one the the actual values of the of the of the society like all Which, the all the inessential things have over time been like just le- like booster rockets falling away and the, the only thing left is the is the is the cone of just militarism yeah and that's the part of it that feels like the the most contemporary and kind of a, a grim way is that like the culture as it exists outside i mean you don't see anything on federation tv there's not like fucking sitcoms or whatever like it's news it's advertisements to join the military it's like fake debate shows about the bugs and that's that and you know, obviously, we're not a hundred percent there yet. You know, we still our, it, there's our, the Marvel Cinematic are. Universe. <laughs> our parents are there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that is basically what it is. That there's like this, like you don't want to say that it's like anhedonic or whatever. You don't want to like diagnose it as like clinically or whatever because it's a, a silly movie about you know whatever it's about. But there is like that is like to me like what we were talking about before with Trump about this like the fact that he doesn't like anything. The fact that people that support him most ardently don't really like anything but him Mm -hmm. and really mostly hate the people that they think they hate Mm -hmm. that like the the dissolution of anything like interesting or pleasurable into this conflict is the part of it that felt most recognizable and then also like even more claustrophobic than i remembered it feeling because another part of the you know the movie is about how like being in their army and their culture fucking sucks. Yeah, it's <laughs> like terrible. everybody hates and, each other and, and treats each other like shit and, all the and time. One of the things you point out um, in the article that I guess like you know I, I had sort of felt but never really been art- articulated like uh, this clearly is that like you know their entire the entire Federation society is uh, you know built around military service and then this like this this total mobilization and war against the bug species and that they've like dedicated like every element of their culture into like, you know, martial valor and military strength. But it, you, you could almost miss that they're all, that they're really terrible at those things, that their society they is, suck. is unbelievably weak. And I guess like I had never really picked up on it like that many times. What like, or I guess like I, I kind of had, but like it is so clear in the movie, even by the end that humanity is losing badly in this war oh, yeah. and that like there's, <laughs> there's, one, there's one scene at the very end of the movie where it's the last like federation newsreel you see and it's like a, a phalanx of like the mobile infantry troops and they're like i'm doing my part and then like someone turns to the camera and it's just a child in a, in, yep. in a full battle uniform holding a rifle and he's like i'm doing my part and it's like they've reached like the red army is a mile outside of berlin phase of this war <laughs> yep. by the end of the movie where they're re- recruiting children into these fucking yeah. like human wave attacks against the Eating bugs grubs. and like yeah. also like that all like the psychic shit with doogie hauser at the end where the brain bug where it's like it's afraid it's like dude that's not psychic all that psychic shit is bullshit like they're just making yeah. it up they're, they're completely they show, making at the it end, up they show the so they capture the brain, not to whatever, spoiler alert to those who were curious at what was going to happen at Starship Troopers. They capture the brain bug, they bring it back, and they start experimenting on it. And you see a little bit in one of the newsreels of the experimentation, and it's just poking it with like a <laughs> yeah, stick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that, all well, they that, got. That, that's, that, I like that scene a lot because that's, that's Verhoeven getting into like the psychosexual terrain of fascism. Yeah. Because they, fi- they get the brain bug, and it basically is a giant vagina. And then they take that big... A, a metal thing and when they put it in its thing there's a censored sign over yeah. it just to like let you know that this is literally a ritualized penetration of and, like and a also feminine coded other and it's also Verhoeven's like uh, a sly attack on like American movie censorship where he's like I've just shown you two hours of the most incredibly grisly violence maybe ever put to film of just like of, of just a bright eyed, uh, good looking young people just being <laughs> getting bitten just, in just, half, just shredded for an hour. limb yeah, from like, limb for or like ninety minutes, and then like any, anything that's like a vaguely subtly penetrative sexual act is like censored. You know, not yeah, gonna, the not things that are censored. The things that are censored on the Federation Network are uh, penetrating the brain bug. <laughs> Matthew, thank you so much for the opportunity <laughs> to say that. And then also a cow getting eaten by a spider. Yeah. But the rest of it is like the like fucking guys getting killed like live on TV. That's, you know, whatever. More that's the cost the, those, of the Mormon the Mormon uh settlers Outpost, who get yeah. torn up. They're all their yeah. corpses are just like in on television, like headless bodies, just like, like a Jackson Pollock canvas. There's so much of that stuff like 
all the the brutality and the failure, like it's not a subtle movie, but he does. There's so much of it in there that they kind of like sneak it in around the margins. There's a little bit about a televised execution. I'd totally forgotten that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ed Newmeyer plays the guy uh, that's getting executed. Oh, I didn't know that. that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And there's the one of the first things where like a meteor, like they're claiming the bugs are shooting rocks at Earth. And they mention, you know, that it's like this time we were ready. And it's just sort of like, all oh, right, so you lost another city. Like, <laughs> like the way you're going to lose Buenos Aires. You just kind of like everybody knows that Rotterdam got smashed. Like, again, sometimes it's like that. You know how bugs are. <laughs> I like I, I, I one thing that you pointed out that I hadn't really thought about before because I enjoy the movie so much. You know, just every time I watch it is that is that especially for an audience that's not you know, keyed into it. And one of the reasons it wasn't that successful is that the action scenes are no fun either. Yeah. Like there's, there's no, they're like all that, like there's no elegance. There's no tactical uh, ingenuity. It's just these guys screaming, firing off like their entire magazine and then getting bitten in. Half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is something that I read a bunch of stuff before I wrote it. That was like, first of all, was good enough that it like set me back a week. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to do, like I read the Umberto Eco essay on fascism, uh, uh, yes. or fascism, or fascism, yeah, yeah, and it's fucking perfect and even more prescient than Starship Troopers is, and like so that like cost me two days because I was like, well, how are you gonna? Why would you write anything now about this? But there's stuff in there that I I think Verhoeven very much incorporated into this, and it's not necessarily to say that he was taking the observation from Eco himself, but about how fascism insistently and like as a, a sort of a tenet of its belief underestimates the enemy that it can't believe that they are capable of victory, but also, you know, it can't conceive of a world after the war is over. Like right. the, the conflict is, is the point of the whole thing. And so that first assault on Clendathy, which is basically just like if D day, if you did D day at like noon after like sending an email being like, we're coming, <laughs> it'll be early afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> like it's like just show up and get like, their yeah, asses beat. They lose three hundred thousand people. Eisenhower is like, day. you know, Operation Overlord is ready for your say so, sir. And he's like, uh, yeah, I guess we'll do it this weekend, whatever. Right, Fuck whatever. It. It's, um, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> is this important? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like all of that stuff, like the that inability to like think of the bugs as anything but bugs is like somehow the thing, and then they are basically just bugs. But like that creates this fascination with them but also makes it impossible for them to be defeated. I mean, I, I think... Really good stuff. You know, like, and, and, and especially, like, if you look at, like we said, Robocop and Total Recall, which, I mean, portray uh, societies that are ruled by a kind of corporate authoritarianism where it's just, like, you know, capitalism and the market are, like, the only things that, like, determine the value of human life. And, and Starship Troopers is more, like, an explicitly, like, fascist military dictatorship. But I think one of the things that Verhoeven gets in his depictions of fascism, whether it's corporate or military or American or whatever, is that he, I think he really captures like a, a, a certain libidinal pleasure for the individual in sort of surrendering themselves to this this yeah. larger body politic. And especially in Starship Troopers, it's like there's, you know, like he, he makes clear that there's like... A, there is an act of like sort of self fulfillment and even like sexual liberation in sort of surrendering your life to this collective. Yeah. Where it's like that again, this is like another thing from one of the essays, like the idea of like fascism as like this fixation with upon beauty, but without sex that it's like, it's all about like yeah. schematics. And, and the perfect, you know, the so perfect th scene that illustrates that is in basic training where they have co-ed locker rooms and showers yeah. and they're all showering together and like everyone's naked. And there's, you know, like when I first saw this movie at 13, I was just like, Oh yeah, this would be, yeah. this, this is, this is, boy, boy, this, is it, this is what I want. Yeah. Hell yeah. So look, many people responded boobs. to me about that being like, that was like their formative nude scene, yeah. which is such a complicated, like, you know, it's, it's so, so, it's so, it, life. It's so great. Cause it's so unsexy. And if you listen to the DVD, commentary with Verhoeven he talks about that scene really illustrating for him uh like the the fascist ideology and mentality of these characters because like yeah like they're all hot and naked and young young dumb and full of cum and they're all thrown in together just soaping one another up but nobody's horny nobody's fixated yeah. on, on sex or anything because they're they're so sublimated like their individual bodies are so sublimated to this larger cause that no one's even considering like the sex act whatsoever because and then the scene where where, where johnny rico and uh what's her name not denise richards uh D dizzy dizzy flores dizzy. Yeah, dizzy flores Dina Meyer. the scene where they my wife actually the, yeah, <laughs> the scene where they 
where they, where they finally hook up, you know, after they've been blooded in combat as far of, as far of, you know, Ratchex uh, Rangers or rough, Ratchex Roughnecks. Yeah. It's like they only have sex after Michael Ironside, like, gives them permission to, where he's like, yeah, he's like, we're rolling out like in 10 minutes. The officer gives permission to smash. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> permission to nut, that's, sir. Permission granted. Like, I was talking about how Verhoeven understood, like, how a society that, puts its, all of its values around personal indulgence will destroy itself and starship troopers is at the other end of that continuum or it's at the other end of that process it's after like they say the brought uh, what brad check talks about how democracy brought the yeah. world to the brink of chaos no, here, yeah. that, i gotta, like, I gotta that, read this that, quote that's Did- when the resources are, have, are no longer tenable with individual indulgence and that's when you get all of that sublimated into this this massive project but it still needs to have an erotic element to it. And that eroticism, instead of being about sex, is now about violence. Yeah. I just got to read the quote from Ratchek here, where he's uh, the history professor, and he says to his students, This year, we explored the failure of democracy, how the social scientists brought our world to the brink of chaos. We talked about the veterans and how they took control and imposed this ability that has lasted our for beautiful generations. Our beautiful veterans. Our beautiful veterans. We love, we love our veterans, don't we, folks? <laughs> our beautiful veterans. <laughs> they took control. <laughs> Tough. Dominated the space. <laughs> well, I, as, the as long as we're talking- like, if, if Trump was, a, if there was a Trump-esque character in Starship Troopers, he would be, he would be made fun of. He would be pathetic. He would be like uh, the Marshall Bell uh, simpering bitch general who gets who Ratchek almost murders and then gets killed by the flying bug. Yeah. Uh, Trump's like, a civilian as hell, man. Yeah. He is not oh, a yeah. citizen. Yeah. He, he, like, he does but, not but have he, citizenship. But but he represents the society that burns out and then and then but without any kind of intervention, like any any kind of intervention against the values and against the the mode of production, the exploitation at the heart of it, it just reconstitutes along less selfish lines, but just as De- destructive only now it's all pushed outward all, all of the, our desires turn into the desire to conquer i think that's really interesting because that gets it the one thing for all the you know whatever the like crash course in like famous essays about fascism i tried to give myself before writing it all of them make a big point of talking about the leader mm-hmm. and that's like every fascist you know society that we've had at least in the 20th century was like it was based around some sort of like cult of personality right. and some charismatic central figure that's not in Starship Troopers. You basically don't see leadership at all. You see like a sky marshal who fucks up and resigns and is disgraced and re- is replaced by somebody who's just as bad. Yeah. Like that is no, but there's not any sense of like, there's no one that people have invested their hopes in or in which like there's some sort of like politics that's like funneling energy back towards the aggrandizement of any particular individual. This is like, what comes like after that? Exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's mature fascism. If fascism yeah. was able to be, to be able to be stabilized, which it isn't, it is eventually destroys itself. Uh, but you know, it could hypothetically take over a whole planet, but then it will eventually destroy itself in its pursuit of conquest elsewhere, which is what seems to be in the process of happening in the movie. Like as yeah, you said, they're getting the, their ass kicked. They, but they might worry with, they, they could be like Berlin 45 with the bugs showing up, yeah. you know, uh, in, 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 uh, Helsinki. What, what's the Geneva? Yeah. Like the, the, the bugs are going to be in Geneva in a year, you know? Yeah. Uh, cause it's like nation's pride or something from, uh, inglorious bastards. But yeah, in like a mature, uh, if there was a way to stabilize fascism, at least on like a global level, you would eventually out, you would mature beyond having like the single figure because getting to one would be destabilizing. Yeah. So I mean, you would this, have to have some stable higher, some stable, a stable, uh, like oligarchy, uh, of, but instead of it being around something as pathetic as access to, you know, uh, 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 capital, it's, it's military prowess. Yeah, yeah. And, and like this is what I mean about like uh, Verhoeven is the prophet. Like his text must be studied by the righteous man because it's like if you follow the trajectory, like RoboCop to Total Recall. I mean, we are living in RoboCop right now, like oh, yeah. without any exaggeration or variation whatsoever. And then I guess like Total Recall will be what happens if we ever like you know if Elon Musk ever breaks these earthly bonds and sets up his fucking you know colony on the moon or Mars or whatever. But yeah, I, I think Matt gets it exactly right. Like like fa- the, the fascism of Starship Troopers is what replaces capitalism and like this crass idiotic consumer culture when that eats itself alive and finally collapses. Yeah. With like but as you said, crucially without any sort of 
intervention on the behalf of like humanity and a more like yeah. de- decent equitable like distribution of resources and as you said production like this like the, the starship troopers universe is what will replace the failure of capitalism and liberal democracy when it eventually crashes yeah nice to think about yeah that's good we love well, it well Dave, 